YouTube. Welcome to Stitching Quilt. This is floss tube number 16. Um, my name is Stephanie, also known as Vintage Sew Girl on Instagram. And um, this is a YouTube channel mostly about cross stitch, but I do sometimes talk about quilting. I also talk about sewing, both, both historical and modern. So sometimes it's just whatever I happen to want to talk about that day. So um, there you go. Um, it, I hope everyone is doing well. Um, we are under a mandatory shelter in place. Or stay home, stay safe is what they call it here. And um, I'm getting a lot of stitching time in. Um, both kinds, sewing and cross stitch. So um, I am a teacher and I am working. Um, it's just all online so I can stitch in between things that I do, mostly answering questions on our Google Classroom and things like that. So, um, yeah, that's how things are going here. Not gone stir crazy yet. I am an introvert and I kind of like the at home time. So, it works for me. So, would you like to see some whips? Here we go. So, um, I have been working on Sorry for the crinkle. My ink circles, little alien schoolgirl. And um, I'm getting quite a bit of progress on it. Hold on just a second. Let me get it just right so you can see it. So there you go. Okay, it's not showing the top. How about like that? This is on um, 18 count oatmeal Ada, which I started this. This is like my oldest or second oldest whip. And I started it back when I was still gritting. I don't grit anymore. Um, I used to dread gritting because it takes so long and I just wanted to start stitching. So finally I just said, and I started stitching. So little alien school girl, I did a lot of this piece right here and these little heels here some of the letters it's what I worked on since you saw me last um, I still love this piece I am a big fan of ink circles and uh, love the designs okay so there's whip number one little alien schoolgirl if I don't put them back, they won't get back. So, second one is was a market haul piece. It is I Will Cut You by Lucy Bean. Um, I'm doing this on 28 count mudslide. I think it's mudslide from Color and Cotton. It was left over from my um, Drawing a blank, drawing a blank. Maybe it's cold outside. So here is what I've gotten so far. I did convert all of my flosses to color and cotton colors, except for the gold, which is mustard seed by uh, Gentle Art. So if you'd like to know what colors I'm using, just comment down below and I'll let you know. I did most, I did all of the scissor work yesterday while we were watching the whole series, the British series North and South, and then a, a British series called, it's done by the guy who did Downton Abbey, and it was called The English Game, and it was about the evolution of soccer, and it was in 1879. It was a really good movie. I was really surprised. It was about soccer but more about the people's lives and the costuming was gorgeous and if you haven't seen it it's on uh is it my it's either netflix or prime i don't remember i'll look it up and i'll put a link down below and uh but it's like six or eight episodes it's not a whole lot and it was really good so and this is in my gasly's bag I love this bag. And third 
third whip that I've been working on is my long dog sampler, the Quilted Bees. This I started on leap day for the long hashtag long dog leap day sale. And I just keep working on it every so often because I love the colors. I'm doing the DMCs and I love the colors and I, it's just a lot of fun. So there you go. One B and I'm doing all the filling. It's the gold in the hexagon all the way around that B. So I started in the top left corner and this has been a lot of fun. This is also, this is on 28 count here. I have the thing. 28 count even weave. Here's the picture again. So I'm right here. So that would be the middle. Just about. I'm really enjoying this and um, I love seeing all the different long dog samplers. I started to get one of the the bigger all color ones and everything but I'm still working on my um, modern folk embroidery big one color piece and I just couldn't do another one color one right now. I will eventually. I really like them all. So that's all the whips I've been working on since I filmed last, but I have some FFOs. So, um, the first one I have, I finished this little piece last year. It's uh, Curtis, I think it's Bowringer. Somebody tell me if I'm not saying it right. And it was a little chart that I found at uh, Fancy Stitches in Cleburne. And uh, this is just some random natural colored linen. I don't even know which company I just grabbed it and these are charted in DMC flower floss which you can't get anymore so I converted them to regular DMC and you can see I finished this in 2019 and I just decided to make it into a little pillow it's kind of wonky but that's okay I like it where's my back I just made an envelope pillow so I can take all that out and redo it if I want I do have some pom-pom trim somewhere. I have to find it, and I'm thinking I might put the pom-pom trim around the outside, but anyway, FFO. I love stitching. Okay, and I mentioned on my last floss tube my Suffrage Act FFO, and I had forgotten to take it to my daughter's house. I did put a picture in, but here is the FFO. This is uh, also a pillow. It is also an envelope pillow, and I bought a pillow form, 9 by 12 maybe, 6 by 12 I don't know. And I, this fabric I bought and attached to the sides, lace trim, blue ribbons with stars, and wooden buttons. These are not vintage buttons, they um, came, I got them in a bag at a quilt retreat as a prize and I believe they're from Moda, the fabric company. So there's Suffrage Act. There's the envelope. So this was a lot of fun to finish as well. Get these out of the way. Okay, and the next thing, um, last Monday, you, you had seen in my last floss tube I had got the Death Rose sewing kit and I showed all the parts and pieces in my last floss tube and I was talking to Michelle Bendy Stitchy on Instagram and she got it too and so we decided we were going to start it. So last Monday we both started it and we had the hashtag death rose sal hashtag death rose sal and Michelle and I were stitching on it and another girl joined in named Katie from Texas and the hashtag's still open if you guys want to do it, uh, use the hashtag. Um, but I finished mine, Michelle finished hers as well. I finished mine. So there is the sewing kit all stitched up. Can you see there's beads here and here and here? Okay, so let me open it up and I'll show you what all is inside. So you just untie the ribbon. 
right? And it unfolds. See? And there's pocket. There is the ruler and my tassel has come off. I need to put my tassel back on. But there should be a tassel right here. There is a thread or floss winder. Waxer pocket and wax. And a wee little needle book. Okay, so all the little pockets are in here. Everything goes in and then it folds back up and you tie the ribbon shut and you can have a little travel sewing kit. Um, throw a little pair of scissors in and I know, I believe Michelle and I both, there is a peyote stitch scissor fob that matches this and Michelle and I both have ordered it from uh, Top Knot, Abby at Top Knot Stitcher and it's not here yet. Never done peyote stitch. Now's the time to learn. So I'm going to have the little scissor fob and I'm going to find a cute little pair of scissors to toss in here as well. So, oh, I forgot to show the back. It says ashes to ashes, dust to dust on the back. This was a lot of fun. I recommend it. Fern Ridge Collections, Death Rose. Uh, Abby at Top Knot Stitcher did have these. I believe she sold out. She's probably getting some more. But if you can't wait, um, you can go to Fern Ridge Collections. I think it's, yeah, FernRidgeCollections.com. I'm not responsible for what happens to your checkbook bank account, whatever, if you go to their website. Not even responsible for mine. So, those are my FFOs. Three FFOs. Look at me go. Um, I do have some haul because I can't stay off the internet, apparently. So, my first one I want to show you, I bought... This is the R&R, I don't know if you can see that, R&R Craft Frame. It is a portable, this is hard to do on the camera, Q-snap, lap or, lap or table stand. So you just stick that in there together and you can have either 11 by 11 Okay, sit on the table and stitch, or you can flip it over and you can have an 8x11. Um, I'd seen these, I found this one on Amazon, but it does come from England, so it takes quite a while to get here, but that's okay. I had seen these on the Sunshine Stitchers. I know EJ had one and Shelia had one, so I decided to give it a try because I was going to the retreat in April which has been postponed to June as of right now. I'm going to show you. So see here's how it works on the table. And you can stitch like that. Sorry for the cleavage. Anyway, really cool but I had bought this for the retreat so that I could stitch at the table and not have to take maybe my big floor stand. Although I was thinking about taking it anyway. But this is going to be a lot of fun, I think, for retreats and different other things. Um, I don't have much of a lap, so it doesn't really work very good in my lap, but it work, it's a great height for on a table. So that's one of my pieces of haul for this week. Also, speaking of Fern Ridge Collections, <laughs> this is called the No Bones nobody's home excuse me and it's a crypt kit and this does it only has this picture if you go look um either at fern ridge collections website or abby top not stitcher they have more pictures of what this looks like and it it's a kit i believe all of their stuff is kits and let me show you it comes with 
needles. These wee little black scissors. Um, the fabric is 28 count Kermit. Love it. It comes with a lining fabric and all of the other things you need to finish it. Look at this purple lame. I can't wait to see what that's for. Um, it also comes with the floss and the floss is Sullivan's and I've never used Sullivan so this will be an adventure so there's all the flosses that go with it um, it also comes with charms and beads and some pins and things and my kit happened to not have any in it I emailed Fern Ridge on Saturday this came Friday evening and I emailed them Saturday morning and they emailed me right back that they were so sorry it must have got left out and they immediately printed a shipping label and it should be here shortly so customer service top notch and they even answered a couple of questions I had about this so um, I'm really enjoying these and so I'm gonna hold off on starting this one just a little bit since I have so many uh, whips um, and also the fact that it's one over one so I have to get a little brave to be able to do that so that is Nobody's Home by Fern Ridge Collection I also got this came from um, Abby the Top Knot Stitcher um, this was a market release by Brenda Gervais it is I collect and it's a button jar with tomato pin cushions and stuff. And I don't know, you can't see. Right behind me here, now there, you can't see them. There are, um, sorry, large truck outside. There are gumball machines with buttons in them. They're vintage and antique buttons. And so this, perfect for me. I also got from Abby this piece called Carmen. Carmen is my daughter's name. So I I had to. And I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm assuming it's German. Stickadine von der Vierenberg. Somebody tell me how to say it. But um yeah, I'm going to do this for her at some point. I'm not sure when. Um, I found this little lovely on one of the stash unload uh, groups on Facebook because I haunt them for things that I've been looking for. And so I got Prairie Moon on the third day of Christmas. It's a stocking. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I could maybe not do it as a stocking and just do it as a regular piece. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not huge on Christmas stuff, but I really love this and I like the little skater people down at the bottom. And the houses. So, that was from a stash unload group. And then I got from the Be Stitch Me group um, she comes in occasionally and she has some de-stash stuff where she's selling some patterns. So I got Lindy Stitches, Emily's House. Um, I just like this. I like the sentiment and the colors. And I think it'll be pretty to do. So no telling when I'm going to start this. So um, that's my cross stitch haul. I do have a couple other things. It's not really haul. Um, my great grandmother is in a nursing home and we're getting the house ready for an estate sale and to sell the house. And um, there's, we went in and took the things that we wanted and not to get rid of, you know, like that. So um, these had always had my name on the back. So I brought them home. And these are some fashion prints. I have two of them. They're from 1866. And they're really lovely and 
I remember them hanging in my great great grandmother's house. Excuse me, did I say great grandmother? It's my grandmother's house we're going through. My brain is fried. So if here's the other one. I absolutely love that green and white dress. So I need to find a place to hang these, but they are 1866 from La Mode de Illustre. I don't know if you can read that down there. It's very faint. Um, and I just love them. Okay. Let's see. That's really all my stitching, but I wanted to kind of talk to you about some of the other stuff I've been doing. I've been sewing, and I'm going to hope to do a little bit more sewing. Um, I bought this pattern. I'm sorry it's not in color. It was really thick to print it online. It was an online pattern from an Australian company, Tessuti Fabrics. I guess that's how you say it. T-E-S-S-U-T-I. Tessuti Fabrics. And this is a, a little shift dress that I like. I have this really pretty green linen, and it's not this acidy. It's my camera is making it brighter than it is. Um, and I thought that this would be really pretty for a summer dress. I will probably do not long sleeves, I'll probably do three quarter sleeves. And um, I have to tape all the pattern together. So that's probably my project for tomorrow morning is tape all the pattern together and maybe get this dress started. So that's modern sewing. Now, historical sewing. What have I been doing? Still been trying to get my stays to work out properly. I realized, and I don't have them in here, but I realized too late that I was making back lace, I knew I was making back lacing stays, but I realized too late that I wasn't going to be able to put them on myself. So I'm trying to figure out if I just need to go ahead and start some new ones that are that lace in the front and the back or what. But um, there is a company called Burnley and Trowbridge that is doing some sew-alongs during this time that a lot of people are quarantined or having to stay at home. And um, they did last week or week before, they did a 18th century pocket sew-along, which I didn't do at the time, but I've since ordered the kit and I'm gonna go. And you can go on YouTube, I'll link it down below, and um, follow their instructions. And uh, you don't have to order the kit, the pattern is linked in the video uh, details and you can get the pattern and you can make it out of fabric you have at home if you want to. Um, so first they did a pocket and this week they're going to be doing petticoats. And um, I knew for the silhouette that I'm going for that I would need to have a, what is called a bum roll. That's this right here. The silhouette in the 18th century was for a small waist but donk donk big bottom. <laughs> so this is a bum roll. This is made out of linen. It doesn't fit my dress form because my dress form is smaller than me. It fits me just fine. But this is made out of linen and stuffed. I had to use polyfiberfill because that's all I had at home. Um, but it is done in such a way that I can take it apart and stuff it with either down or whatever later. So I've got my bum roll made so that I can make my petticoats the right length. If you make your petticoats without a bum roll and then you put the bum roll on, your skirt in the back will be too short. So um, I had put up a post on Instagram to help me vote for fabric and everybody, the most votes was for this blue. So I'm definitely going to be making a baby blue linen petticoat. And then I think I'm still gonna make the white stripe as well. So maybe next time I video I can show you two petticoats and hopefully I'll have more news on the stays front as it is. So um, 
that's where my historical costuming is right now. I'm kind of stymied because my stays are not what I want. And they, they take a, quite a lot of work to make them. Excuse me. <coughs> a little dry throat there. They take quite a lot of work to make them, so it's really kind of down heart. You know, it kind of hurts a little bit when you get to the point when you realize these aren't going to work. So I'm still kind of pondering that. Well, okay. So two videos ago, I did. I had did. I did a video, a giveaway on my video for one of my project bags with a little floss minder and um, the person who won I messaged her I left her a comment and she's never responded to me so um, I'm going to redo the giveaway I'm gonna do it here today so if you would like one of my large project bags these are measure well here I can measure it right quick this is just like 15 and a half wide by 14 inches tall. They will hold an 11 by 11 Q-snap just fine. So they're great for larger projects. In fact, um, this will fit in one when you take it apart. Although I'm thinking of making a double-sided bag so I can have the frame in one side and the project in the other. Look for that soon. Um, but anyway, if you would like to win this bag, here's what I want you to comment down below. Tell me what your favorite TV series is. Um, with all of this having to stay at home, I've been re-watching the TV show Fringe. It was from the early 2000s. I don't know. Did anybody else watch Fringe? I absolutely love the show. It was just weird enough. It was great. I also like things that are historical, um, the different series, like I mentioned, the, the English game, um, things like that where they're costume dramas. Um, so just tell me what your favorite TV series is. I need some more stuff to binge watch. And um, make sure you don't say giveaway. Make sure you're 18 and older, yada, yada, yada. Okay? So project bag giveaway now um, one thing I would like to ask is and let me know down below if you would like um, would you like to, me to do a stitch with me where, where I work on one of my projects I would be happy to do one if you'd like one so just let me know so I think I have pretty much talked about everything I had to talk about today and um, I hope you are all safe and well and staying safe. And I will see you next time. Bye.